Okay, so we're back here in Octave, the free and open source equivalent to MATLAB, and I wanted to correct a couple of mistakes I made in the previous tutorials, as well as use that as an opportunity to explain uh, important concepts about how to deal with finite differences, things like average velocities, when you're dealing with uneven time steps or just uneven steps in any independent variable. Um, so first off, let's. this is all of the code to generate some figures, so let's just press F5 on this script, uh, or we could press the run button up here, um, and that'll generate the plot for us, just the way it would if we entered all these commands one at a time. Uh, okay, so that's all fine and good. That generates the position as a function of time on the top, and the speedometer readings as a function of time on the bottom. All right, that's all fine and good. Um, but uh, let's uh, pick that apart a little bit. So let me do something real quick, which is to let me say clear all, which will clear out all of our variables, close all, which will actually close all of our figures. And then we'll do CLC, which will clear all of our command window. And then let me show you something nifty you can do in Octave or in MATLAB, is if you highlight a block of code like this and press F9, it will run just those commands that you've highlighted. So see now, if we go back to the command window, it ran just those three lines of code, not the whole script. And so now let's start generating figures again. Let's make a new figure. Um, we could just press plot, but it's easier if you pick a figure number so that you don't accidentally overwrite your previous plots. So let's make it number 42 just for fun. And then let's go ahead and plot time and position and let's use blue diamonds just like before all right that's all fine and good and let's make two two plots two subplots rather oh actually we're gonna transpose those we want uh, two comma one so that it does up and top and bottom whereas one comma two would make it left and right because it's uh, rows comma columns and then let's plot that again. Just type up arrow until it shows up. All right, there it is. And then on the bottom, let's we can go ahead and plot t comma s, which is the speedometer readings. And let's do green again. Oh, <laughs> need to change the subplot first. So do subplot two comma one comma two. Okay, so now we have what we had before, but with less, less nice formatting. But now let's go and calculate our average velocities. So let's make a new time, which we'll call it TH for time in hours. And we'll say that equal to time divided by 60 divided by 60. 60 seconds in a minute, 60, sec 60 minutes in an hour, so that now we have our time in hours. And then we'll say that speed uh, or let's we could call it you know speed average is equal to that maybe that's not a good name we'll just we'll call it speed um, but it's the average speed over each interval is equal to diff which is the finite difference of x dot divided by so that it does element wise uh, it's always the sign of a sort of a a noob in Octave or MATLAB is if you just have dot before your multiplication and division. Uh, but when in doubt, put it there because that will multiply the individual elements. Uh, whereas if you don't do it, it will do like ma matrix and vector operations. Uh, whereas if you put the dot there, it will just multiply each number in your array one at a time without doing any more complicated operations like summing them together as a dot product or something, which is what it does by default. It's ironic, though, of course, right, that the, the dot makes it into not the dot product. So, but it's diff of t x divided by diff of th, and that'll give us these speeds in miles per hour in each 0.1 mile interval. Okay, that's all fine and good. But now let's do, remember, the hold on command keeps us from overwriting the line that we plotted on the lower half of the graph. 
and then let's plot t and we're still that'll still be plotted in seconds which is fine in fact that's preferable and uh, but then we'll try it let's, let's see what happens if we just try to plot our newly calculated speed and let's just make that say red diamonds rd dash and uh oh it's throwing an error isn't it right and the reason is because this vector is not the same length as our time vector right so if you look over here the this is where it shows you the variables and in fact you can double click on these right so uh our 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 time variable see it has 12 entries and if we look at our speed variable it only has a it only <laughs> It only has it puts it down here, put put it down here. It only has eleven, right? So if you think about it, right, it's calculating the differences. So to calculate the difference between point this point and this point gives you a value, between this point and this point gives you a value, and so on and so on and so forth. Uh, but when you get to the end, there's no next point to calculate a value from, right? So you're left with one less value. And really, each one of those represents the average in the middle of each of those time intervals. And so how do we deal with that? Well, one way to deal with it, which is the way I dealt with it before, is to just do, you know, okay, we'll start with the second, we'll start, you know, since we losing at the end, we can just do, you know, one colon one minus end, or sorry, end minus one, which is saying, you know, one less than the end index. And that will, plot it for us, but that's not so good, right? Because that's clearly offset. Um, and so you, then you can do what I did before, which is we can just say, okay, well, I know how to fix that. We'll just add an offset. We'll say plus the mean of the difference of the time steps. And that will give us an offset. Uh, and that works fine if all of the times are the same distance apart, right? But the problem with that is that these time steps aren't the same distance apart. So the appropriate way to do that is actually to say, well, rather than adding an offset, we say we'll take those values, divide them by two, and then to that, we're going to add t sub two colon end so the second element until the last element divide that by two so that way this is basically saying for each data point take the average of the first one and the next one and so let's give that uh, a different symbol let's make that uh, circles instead so we can tell them apart And that is what actually puts them in the correct place. So that's maybe getting a little bit messy now. So let me turn it off and do hold off, plot that again, then turn hold back on, and then go all the way back up to this. And that's how you properly set them. So that now each one of these is exactly lining up with what it should, which is the midpoint uh, between each of these data points up above. And now you can see that makes these two curves line up much more nicely than it did with the simple half step off offset. Uh, and of course, much, much better than it does with just aligning the values. Um, and so, uh, you know, just to show you real quick how that looks in a spreadsheet program to make, just in case it maybe makes a little, little bit clearer. Um, Right, so you know, let's just do uh, time. Let's do time in hours. Oh, it's lagging. <laughs> this is why I don't like using Microsoft products. I should really switch to LibreOffice. Uh, all right, there we go. It stopped lagging. All right, and then we'll say equal to time in seconds divided by sixty divided by sixty and then click and drag the way we do in Excel. And then we'll do speed 
and then we'll say is again it has to have something to subtract from so we'll say is equal to this oh <laughs> uh, man so clunky it's equal to this minus this divided by this minus this yes I want to accept that correction even though that correction was actually incorrect thanks Microsoft <laughs> alright there we go see so the speeds now correspond with that so uh, effectively what we're we're doing is you know this would be the so this then this column would be like the time sub one colon n minus one right uh, would be you know equal to you know that and then the variable for t sub two colon end would be uh, oh actually that's what this is um, and minus one is ditching the last value right um, whereas this one you go from the second one you go all the way to the end and then to get the average you would do this one is equal to this one divided by two plus this one divided by two so you see it's like diag adding the diagonals there and then you drag that down and you get something that has the same number of entries as the speed column let's drag it down so that it matches up so see now now these two columns are the same size versus these two are not the same right there's this one missing up here and these two are missing the one is missing the beginning one is missing the end and this is the average of the two that gives us uh, what we actually want so hopefully that makes things a little bit clearer um, you know just normally you can get away with this simpler system of just saying um, let me scroll back until I get it. Yeah, of just saying, let's add this uh, this little average, the this mean of diff, um, because normally your time steps are, are the same, and you can just add half a time step and get exactly what you need. Uh, but sometimes, like in this data set, they're uneven. In which case, the appropriate thing to do is to take these, uh, you know, these two, one of which is missing the last data point uh, one of which is missing the first data point and then average them and you'll get uh, the midpoints uh, for every single uh, segment line segment um, appropriately so anyways I felt I needed to correct myself but it uh, gives me an opportunity to talk about this in a little bit more detail uh, so you can understand that uh, you know this is how you should think about taking finite differences right is you're you're getting the average slope during this interval and the appropriate uh, label for the independent variable or the appropriate timestamp in this case to assign to that is exactly halfway between them uh, and then sort of you know the operation you do to implement that is just you know take two two sets one of which is missing the beginning one of which is missing the end and uh, add them to each other uh, which in octave is you know this command here t sub one one colon n minus one over two plus t sub two colon n uh, over two so anyways uh, hopefully that made things uh, a little bit clearer uh, thanks for watching bye